It's Terry at D-Lab. Today I'm going to take you through a Fender Champ. It's a silver face unit. Local uh, band member brought it into my shop for repair. He said it's kind of uh, anemic. Thing uh, doesn't have a good tone. A lot of distortion. So I'm going to show you what it does on the scope. We'll tear it apart and see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, we'll power it up. I have a uh, little audio generator hooked up, about six to seven hundred hertz input, so you can hear it, right? So let's pan over to the scope. See if I can do this without uh, driving you nuts here. Sometimes this thing makes a noise. I'm gonna go right on the old screen. Let's crank her up and take a look at the sine wave. Not a very pretty sine wave. Almost triangular. Of course, you can hear the scratch of controls, but if you look at that sine wave, turn the. Uh, there we go. It gets better as time goes by, but the sine wave does not look pure at all. So let's pull the chassis out. See what we got going on in there. So I, I talked to the owner about the amp and he said it was working fine and then all of a sudden just you know the symptom came up. So first step, I'm gonna check the tubes. Uh, I've got the 6V6 plugged into my Amplitrex 1000 tube checker right now. Check those and if it's a bad tube, I'll put that in, see what happens. If not, we'll go a little further. I'll let you know the results here in a second. So there it is, the old GE6V6 being tested. My guess is it's about 50% of his life is gone. Ooh, look at that, 28% emission. That thing's L Junkaramus. So let's find a good one and replace it. And since I like this guy, I found an old brown base, beautiful 6V6. Now I'm going to replace it with... It's also a vintage 1960s tube, and that one is 99% emissions. Looks like the hot ticket. Let's put her in. So checking the tubes, I did find that the 5Y3 rectifier was fine. The uh, 12AX7 input tube was about half of its life, so that's also been replaced. Okay. Now he said that uh, his second input jack was not working right. If you take a peek right back there, you'll see that this wire is right smack dab in the middle of where you'd plug in your jack. So I'm assuming that's the issue. We're going to reposition that wire. And while I'm in here, we'll blast a little uh, control cleaner in. All those jacks that were scratchy. So we'll get that taken care of. And I got the new tubes in it. So we're going to fire it up here in a minute, see how the bias looks on the output tube, put her back on the scope. Alright, so we're going to check the bias. Now the bias resistor in there is a 470, but I've got it on the meter and as you can see it's actually 520 ohms. So she's went up in value quite a bit. It's 10% resistor. I'm not worried about that right now until we actually see what the voltage drop is across that resistor. All right, the amp's powered up. This is the voltage drop across that bias resistor. We'll just call that 27 volts. So we'll do a little Ohm's law. If you take 27, divide that by 520 ohms is what we saw. It's about, say, 52 milliamps. That's running pretty hot. That's probably what ate that 6V6. So we're going to rebias it, take it out about 35 mils. Give this poor thing some headroom and stop that uh, tube from running like a firecracker. One thing I want to point out while I was in here, I pulled out that uh, bias resistor. I looked at the cap they had strapped across it. It's a 25 volt capacitor. In the end, slightly pregnant. And guess what? It's a 25 volt cap. Remember how much voltage we measured across that cap? 27. Wrong cap. Changing that too. 
Well, I had to play the bias a little bit uh, to get her under control. In this case, I've got the new uh, cathode bypass cap in there. And you can see, this is the actual current through the tube, which is 33.7 milliamps. And here's the resistor. I actually have my meter in current mode. And I put this new resistor in line to get the current under control. That's about where you want a 6V6. Um, you know, that's decent idle current. It's not going to exceed the rating of the tube. Running at 55 mils or whatever we had before is insane. That would just bake your ramp while it's sitting there doing nothing. So I'm going to solder this guy in, and then we're going to test it. All right, here we go. Same setup. But in this case, I have a uh, dummy load resistor strapped across the outputs instead of the speaker. All right. And I'm still monitoring with the scope. We still have the uh, audio generator up there doing his thing. Now the scope's not seeing a signal because I don't have the volume turned up. So let's go here, turn that up. Whoops, let me pan over to that scope now. I wouldn't have all these problems if I wasn't a one man operation. But take a look at the sine wave now. It looks beautiful. Okay, nice and symmetrical. Nice and responsive. I cleaned the controls so they're not spazzing anymore. So last step, let's hook a guitar up. But I'm pretty sure this champ is fixed. Well, I thought we were at 100% until I noticed that the amp was cutting out intermittently. Got in here. I tap this cap. Watch what happens. Hear that? That capacitor is shorting out internally. Gonna have to change it. All right, without well resolve the uh, cutout issue. She's 100% now. Funny thing is, is the cap I pulled out. I don't know if you can see it there. It's actually a two microfarad at 50 volts, whereas the schematic says it's supposed to be a 25. So somebody must have been in here playing science experiment. Let's make my amp sound better. But anyway, it's back to original. So there's channel one playing. No more scratchy controls. Okay. And there's channel two, the one he said didn't work. So we got both channels working again. As you saw earlier, sine waves clean. I think we're getting close. Let's hook up the old guitar Ramus. We're back into the champ. This thing won't give up. Now it's developed another problem. Watch when I move the input jack. Okay. It's not my cord. It does it on my audio generator too. Looking underside, which you can't see, when they installed these jacks, they didn't use lock washers. I believe there's enough corrosion from over the years to where it's intermittently losing its ground connection. So, let's put some lock washers on and see what that does. Alright, well you guessed it. Didn't help at all. So we've got the problem. So we're going to change the jacks. You either wore out or there's something internal wrong with it that I'm not seeing. So you wonder why things get so expensive at repair shops. You say, boy, you just changed out a couple tubes. Why did it take so much time? Well, you're seeing it, people. All right, so the uh, crazy input jack problem's fixed. I can move it around now. No more noise, all right? So I did have to replace this input jack. It's an old switchcraft, but it's probably been in there since day one. The inside's all corroded. The tin plating is gone, it's down to brass, and it's kind of black looking and corroded inside. So I had to go. New jack took care of it. Then, the dumb thing started cutting out on me. I was like, what is going on? So I got in here and started looking around the eyelet board. I found some resistors that from, you know, time and vibration, there was little cracks where the leads went into the eyelet. So I resoldered those. Now I think I finally got this dumb thing fixed, right? So I have a guitar hooked up to input one. It's working. Good deal, huh? 
Let's turn it down a little bit. Input two. Voila, huh? Well, we've been working on it for about three hours. Probably get about 50 bucks to fix it. It's good deals. This is what you want to do for a living, guys. All right, so let's get it back together, give it a final checkout. So a lot of you guys are saying, why does D-Lab always drink wine when he makes videos? Well, here's a prime example, okay? I sit out here and kind of torture myself. But I had my friend over here, Robert Mondavi, to help me out. So the champ's back together. Of course, I don't play, but it doesn't matter. The question is, does the amp work? Yes, okay? That's channel one, so go to channel two. Boom! D-Lab does it again. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helps you with your repairs. My best advice is be patient. Don't slap in a tube and say, man, my amp's working again, because there's usually a bunch of underlying problems. You got to see them right here. Take care. We'll see you.